everyone, this is Princess Style bringing you another Ruby Talks video. And I do not have Elizabeth with me today. Instead, I have my other sister who's going to be off camera for this. It'll be like I'm talking to myself in here. Only you've got voices in your head talking back to you. Which, come to think of it, is perfect because today we were actually going to talk about Oscar a little bit more. Um, I talked about him in the previous video about characters, but I didn't get to go into quite the detail that I wanted to. And besides, I think that there's some stuff I've just realized over the past week that's super cool. So we're going to get into that. This will probably be a way shorter video, though. So bear with me. Also, if you notice the lighting's a little bit weird, it's because the sun's at a weird angle right now. So... Probably didn't need to point that out. But anyway, uh, voice in the background who I can't see. What um, what do you have to say? All right, so like as a character intro, like what do I yeah, do? Is um, I have this little neat list here of what we're going to talk about. And the first thing is his introduction. How do you feel Oscar was introduced to us as a person and as a character? Well, that's an, it's an interesting topic. Oscar, um, well, like you said, he's based off um, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. So he's supposed to be like this kind of wide-eyed lost person who's trying to find his way and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be hard not to get emotional recording this. But honestly, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about him at first. I thought he was just going to be a team replacement for Pira. So I didn't think I would be that... <laughs> I didn't think I'd be that big of a fan of his. And Ospin being in his head really freaked me out at first. So It's interesting you bring that up because I also, uh, the second thing we're going to talk about is complaints. And some of the complaints I read is that he is a cheat replacement for Pura, which just makes my blood boil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they're nothing alike. Nothing, no. Not really personality-wise at all. And they so are, far. they're kind of going through Oh my gosh, like, they're going through different things, but at the same time, it's kind of the same because it's both about the power of choice. That is true, and that's been pointed out by people like Eruption Fang. Uh, I guess I could give his channel a shout out here. I don't know if I'd say I'd recommend it, but it's interesting if you want, like, more, more theories. But his thought is that neither of them really had such a thing as choice because Ozpin has taken away their choice. Now, you can argue that Pyrrha still did because she was her own person, a thinking, feeling human being, and I, you know, love her, and I totally think, yes, she had free will. I mean, not information, but free will, but the problem with Oscar is that he doesn't, because since season five's finale, we know that Osmond could take him over without him wanting him to. Ah, uh, yeah. And he has. So... What do we make of that? Oscar has been established as somebody um, who wants to be a good person. I mean, like, Ospin said that way back in season four. Like, you want to go, you know, you want to get off this stupid farm. Yeah, it's not just being about a good person. It's about being a person who really lives, you know, who does amazing things. And Oscar seemed like such a sweet kid, too. I mean, like, his relationship with his aunt seemed like it was pretty good. But he wanted to be more than a farmer. Luke Skywalker's theme. Oh, man. Is he based on that character, too? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> it was just something funny I saw somebody do once. But the point being, Oscar had dreams and he had goals. And it does not seem fair that he's been stuck with this ever-present voice in his head that he can't get rid of and can just take over his body. Anytime, obviously, it doesn't take over his soul, at least not yet. Well. But, Osmond said, eventually we're emerged. So at what point do Oscar's thoughts become, as Osmond said, our thoughts from the very beginning Osmond's been kind of creepy about this saying like you no longer have privacy you no longer have just yourself and we learned that Osmond's curse in this volume season six 
was yeah. given to him so that supposedly he would never be alone, which is a really stupid reason to curse somebody within reincarnation, which it is a curse. Uh, Let's just be real. One of these days, you're going to have to make a video talking about just how idiotic these deities are. I will probably make that video. <laughs> Yeah, we'll talk about it. That's a rant video waiting to happen. That's a rant video that needs to happen. But as far as it affects my boy Oscar, who I really liked pretty much ever since volume five. And I thought he's just, he's so sweet. He's so adorable. Don't know why people hate him so much. Not everyone hates him, but there are, there are people who just hate him. But I think uh, since there are people like that, it's only fair to discuss what their complaints are before I get into why I think they're wrong and why I think Oscar's really an amazing character. If a sad one. We're just going to keep keep doing this, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. Their complaints. You've read them. Um, no. You've never I read like them? I like to stay away from people complaining about the show because I don't want them to stamp on my good vibes. I get my good vibes stamped on a lot, to be honest, <laughs> because I like reading comments to find out if people saw something I didn't, and often they have, but I, unfortunately I get a lot of garbage, and it makes it just makes me so mad, but we'll talk about it, um, try to be fair here. One of the main complaints about Oscar is that we really don't understand his motivations. I agree with this complaint slightly. I think that his motivations have never been perfectly explained. What, so, I mean, we get hints, like his speech to Hazel is one hint where he says, like, I want to fight for myself. I want to do the right thing. Um, and, and we've gotten teasers, you know, and he's kind of, but he's never really sat down. I mean, he told Ruby he always wanted to be more than just a farm hand, but he's like, who would ask for this? Who would? Who would ask for this? Nobody would ever ask for this to happen to them. And if they did, I would have serious questions. You know what I'm saying? Do we know what Oscar's motivations are? That is a really tough question. Because why, assuming, this is a big assumption, but as of episode nine, spoiler alert, he is still Oscar. Why is he going along with this? And we'll talk about why I think he's not, but... If he is, and assuming that Austin's not still influencing him in some way, which is a huge assumption also, but if he's not, if they're going to go with this is totally Oscar agreeing to this, why? Oscar is kind of like the classic protagonist that most fantasy stories start off with. He's a good guy with a normal life. He dreams of something more, and all of a sudden something comes along that forcibly pulls him into the conflict. Like they talked about in the channel, overly sarcastic productions, like with I don't with remember the which paragons. One. I don't remember which video exactly, but they're during one of their trope talks. Not a lot of heroes have like motivations that say, "Well, I'm doing this because it's part of my 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 code as a person." Normally, they're doing it because of some personal reason. So for Oscar, his has been, he's got this voice in his head and this he voice won't, shut up, won't really. let him alone. But one thing that I, I'm i wondering about is Oscar, for all this time, he's been trying to work with Ozpin to the extent that if he gives Ozpin a little bit, hopefully Ozpin won't try to take anymore. Ozpin can take Oscar's body over by force. He can do that. Oscar knows he can do that. So he's hoping... If he works with Ospin, Ospin won't find, feel the need to do that. So maybe a lot of the reason he's going along with this is he's scared of what will happen if he doesn't. That is a really good point. It's a very real fear. If you knew something could take you over at any moment. If you don't do what it wants you, you to. You don't do what it wants. I mean, John kind of accused him of pretending to be Ospin, but the fact is, whether Oscar is Ospin or whether Ospin is just in the back of his mind somewhere, knowing that Ospin has control and he does not, ultimately, as far as we know, does that not manipulate him in a way that where it is his choice to go along with it, but if he didn't choose to go along with it, he wouldn't retain any 
agency whatsoever. And Oscar clearly wants to retain some amount of agency. He says, I hate this. I want it to stop. He wants to be his own person. And Ruby says, you are your own person. But the fact is, is he? Is he? You know, we, we have a problem here. What if Oscar is not his own person? And even if he is now, if he knows that eventually he won't be, how is that going to affect his choices? Yes, he's trying to do the right thing, but is the right thing just what he's afraid Osmond's going to make him do? And that's kind of what Oscar's arc is. It's not about saving the world so much as it is about saving himself and finding himself and not losing it. And he might try to save the world under normal circumstances. He might have gone off to save it on his own without Ospin prodding him to do it. But in this case, he wasn't. The world being at stake was just kind of thrown into him being at stake. That's kind of the problem. Oscar seems like he would have normally been an unselfish person, but this is forcing him to be selfish in that... I mean, like, it's it's, it's going to be, it's his obsession is, is he himself? Is he not? And he's trying so hard to not let that stop him. But the problem is, if he just goes along with it, then, you know, out of unselfishness, does he have any real choice? Mm. He's kind of in an impossible to win situation. Unless he had help. Unless he had help, or unless he, in the end, does have some amount of free will. Osmond hasn't really told us whether any of his past forms ever tried to fight him the way Oscar has fought him. But the fact that Oscar succeeded even once raises the question, can he keep succeeding or will he get weaker? Can he get stronger or does he have to lose to Ospin over time? Well, the thing I think that's different about Oscar from Ospin's previous forms is that Oscar not only has friends who are supporting him, but he has friends who know the whole story. They know that Ospin is trying to is going to try to take over him. They know the battle. They know the exact circumstances surrounding why things are the way they are. So they're going to support him. And I think just knowing that other people know what you're going through is enough to make you stronger than the person who has to face this trial of identity alone. That is true. But the point is, they would have to be on Oscar's side. It seems like Ruby is for Team Oscar here. But what about the other? Do they think that there's any point in Oscar? I mean, that's kind of what this whole hit running away thing was even about. Everyone agrees Oscar's an important part of this team. But for how long? I think Oscar was afraid that they didn't really think that way. I mean, whether or not he actually tried to run away or not, it's kind of beside the point. You know, the thought has crossed his mind. What another complaint about Oscar is that he changes constantly. He just seems to go wherever the plot takes him. I don't think this is necessarily fair. I mean, like we talked about, that's his whole thing. He was dragged into this. He is dragged into this. He doesn't have a huge choice because, again, if he leaves, Osmond can make him come back. So that he's going along with whatever seems necessary in the situation actually makes sense. What else would you do? But it's a little difficult to ask somebody like Oscar to fight, except to fight for their right to choose. But to fight in general, it's hard to ask him to do that because how much of it is him? You know, how much of this was his battle? And, like, it's not his fault. None of it is his fault. But that's the problem people keep running into is that it's not Oscar's fault any of this happened. And yet, because Oscar is a part of it, even though he has no agency... It is his problem. And it's really complicated. And there's really, the way I see, and this is where we're going to go, I think, into um, what needs to happen here. There's only one solution. And that is there has to be a way for Oscar to remain Oscar. Otherwise, he's just a victim. And somebody who wanted to be protagonist and who ends up a victim... Like we all were afraid was the case with Pyrrha. And in some ways, you still could argue that is what happened to Pyrrha. But at least Pyrrha knew she was risking her life Okay, when she went into it. Here's a slight tangent. Here's the difference. Ospin and took tried to take the choice away from both 
Pierre and Oscar, if you listen to Eruption Fang, in that he didn't tell them the whole story. So they couldn't make an informed choice. They didn't know the real risks. But here's the thing. He never meant for Pyrrha to try to fight Cinder without the maiden powers, but that's what Pyrrha chose to do. And in that way, that's her taking the choice back, saying, I don't need what your plan for me, Ozpin. I'm going to do what's right because there's no choice for me. I would always do what's right. They talked about that in the latest episode. There was no choice for her because but she would never... she had already made the choice. Yes. And if you think that you're like me and you think the song Sacrifice still resonates a lot with Pierre's character, it makes sense that she would think that way because the point, the person in that song is saying, I'm not your sacrifice, you can't have my life. And Pierre sort of, by not fighting, by fighting without the powers, I don't think she intentionally was saying to Ozpin, step off. But if she had known, and in a way, like, in a way, she knew what he was doing was wrong. And for her to try anyway was saying that it doesn't matter whether I have these powers or not. It doesn't matter whether you're helping me. It doesn't matter whether you're even alive because she thought he was dead. I'm still going to do the right thing. And so Pierre put herself outside of Osmond's spirit of control for one moment. And she was the first one who did that. See, that with Oscar, he's like we discussed, he's not right now about doing the right thing just for the sake of that. I mean, I, he probably would be. But Right now, he's just trying to do the right thing so he'll keep himself. Now, what if his way of breaking out of Ospin's control was doing the right thing despite what Ospin had planned? Well, he has been trying to do that. But Even at the expense, disappeared, he still stayed with them. At the expense of even his own self, his own identity. And as, yeah, it seems like that is the only way Oscar can be himself is to not be himself. That doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem right. That That is definitely wrong. I mean, again, you go back to Pura. She was faced with a similar choice. She was willing to do it. In the end, she didn't, though, because Cinder stopped her. And the only thing I thought Cinder did that was kind of good was stop that from happening to Pura. In the end, it didn't really pay off, did it? But the point is, I don't think that that should happen to somebody, and that's a very scary direction to go with this. But on that note, is it already happening? Oh, yeah. Here we go. So some people have already talked about this after watching the latest episode. And we talked about it in our previous video, So, too. obviously, spoilers. Spoilers. So, in episode 9, we find out Oscar never actually ran away. Or so he says. But he did get an interesting new coat that looks an awful lot like what Ozma wore when he and Salem took over the world. Which is creepy. But also, uh, there was something weird about the way he was talking to them that I want to talk about. So far, the only really distinguishing fact factor between Oscar's character and Osmond's character at any given time is for one thing, Oscar doesn't lie. But even before we knew that Austin was a liar, we knew one thing about Oscar that you will never ever see about us, and that is Oscar is consistently a vulnerable character. Oscar may yell at Ruby and seem kind of like a scared little kid, but at least he's honest about how out of control he feels. Oh man. <laughs> Yes. And that makes him the complete opposite of Osmond, who completely denies being out of control to the point where he lied to everyone <laughs> in order to maintain control when he knew he didn't have it. Even when he wasn't straight up lying to their faces, he still remained at a distance because he wanted to seem like the person everyone could turn to for security, even though that is the absolute op opposite of what he turned out to be. Yeah, and in fact, it seems like he's leading everyone to their death. But claiming to be he you never see Osmond cry except but one time and then he immediately ducks out as soon as like they're tearing him up so um but you never see him get emotional you never see him get angry you never see him get be vulnerable at all except for like that one time and it's kind of sad because it seems like he's afraid to be a human being anymore. Yeah. Oscar's completely the opposite. Oscar is always freaking out. 
And, and he's honest. Especially with Ruby. And even though it's like, dude, deal with it. You actually love him for that because he feels like he's one of the other people who's willing to admit this is completely insane. So the thing about Oscar is in his admitting that he has absolutely no idea what's going on and he is totally not the one in control. I mean, not just with Oscar. He just, Osbin, he just has no idea what he's doing. That actually makes him a more steady person to lean on and depend on than Ospin ever was. And why we trust Oscar, even though we do not trust Ospin, even though we know Oscar does not have great control, yet we still trust him as a character. That's why. Oscar doesn't be SS. I'm just going to say it right out. You know, he doesn't. This is the problem. In episode 9, at the end, Oscar seemed very composed and yike like after john roughed him up he looked like he was going to cry and i would not have blamed him so he ran out just... so he runs out and, but he seems so controlled so like he's he's actually planned out what he's going to say which also doesn't seem like oscar at all and he's not vulnerable i mean you'll notice what he says is that, yes, it's okay, John, you know, and yeah, I'm going to try to do the right thing. But what he's not saying is that I'm scared. I'm freaked out. I am worried. Like, he says he's been thinking the same thing, but there's not emotion there. Like, there usually is with Oscar. He's just saying, it's okay, guys. You don't have to worry. He is trying to be. You don't have to worry. Because I've got it under control. Now, this is one of two things. My favorite is that Ozpin is just taking him over and is trying to totally pull all everyone's eyes by acting like him. It totally would make sense that Ozpin could do this because obviously he's had past lives where he had to. And you know, Which Oscar, is disturbing. Oscar had just gone through a really emotional time. He was feeling insecure because John was accusing him of all these things. Somehow it seems unlikely he would have put up much of a fight. It would have been easy for Osman to just come back out, slip Sneak up on him, take control. Or in an even more underhanded and far more disturbing, and I do not like this idea kind of way, they're already merging. Without, and Ospin's personality is starting to influence Oscar. Without Ospin trying very hard, without Oscar even realizing it. I don't like that. I think that sounds way too sudden to just psh, do that after, like, not getting it before. Like, I mean, any hints that the, that was happening. Like, it was an emotional time, so that could be the catalyst for that as well. It could be, and they could go with that. I don't like that. But either one makes sense, given what we know. And since what we don't know is how much resistance Oscar even has, it's hard to say. One of the reasons I didn't think that Ozpin had forcibly taken Oscar over was when they when everyone gets back to the house and they're like, Oscar, are you okay? And after they've talked it out for a little bit, Oscar's just like looking at Ruby the way he usually does, which is like, oh man, you're just the greatest thing on this gosh darn planet. You are like a big plate of cookies, Ruby, <laughs> with a tall glass of milk. Sorry, I just feel like she would be flattered by that. <laughs> So, yeah, he's looking at her like that. He does look at her like that. And I will admit, upon rewatching, I studied his facial expressions, and they seemed pretty legit, but that's just the thing. They did seem legit, but we know that Ozpin can emote when he wishes to, and that he's not really a bad actor, mm. or a liar, for that matter. So, also, he's had thousands of years of learning how to read people so that he can act like them. I mean, True. he literally was in the body of somebody who it looked like already had a family and had to, like, fake being that person. Either that or got married out. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. But if that did happen, then he must be pretty good at pretending to be other people. And you would think that would just come with the job. We don't know how old these people are when he merges with them most yeah. of the time, but clearly they're older than babies. So they already have an established personality, and if no one's going to figure it out, then he has to act like the person. I mean, Osman could have done this a hundred times before, once, if someone gets mad at him. I mean, he says you think Leo was the first. 
I think they're the first persons who've ever gotten mad at him over this. They may be the first ones who knew the full truth. But the point is, he's probably pulled this before, and it would not be out of character for him to do it again. Mm. It is out of Oscar's character to be, be so calm. Like, usually he's looking at the floor, as he pointed out. He's looking at the floor because... Yeah, I said, like, usually Oscar kind of looks at the floor. He doesn't, like, make eye contact. He, he like, he, clutches hands together. He's nervous. And he wasn't and any of part those of, things. Part of the reason he's nervous is because he's being honest and he doesn't know how people will take that. But that's why we love him. And yet... And I'm, like, watching this and I'm thinking, this is not Oscar right now. This is weird. What is wrong with him? And I've learned with this show that when I'm thinking that, it's usually because they want me to. They are just that good. They are that good. Or they're really good at trolling us. <laughs> I don't know which it is, but... I sense a plot twist coming. All right. But before we wrap this up, I mean, we're like, we're a little over time already, but I just want to like, I feel like I haven't done this with the characters enough. I mean, what does Oscar's story mean? What do you think it means? What is it essentially about from what we know so far? Well, like we said, there's a parallel between him and Pira and her story was about choice. Well, yeah, we know free will is part of it. What is free will? How much free will do we have? How is free will part of making you who you are? But I think also it's about fighting for yourself. Pura didn't fight for herself. True. Oscar does. And in the end, I'd like to hope that might mean he'll have a better faith than just being absorbed into Osmond's consciousness. It seems like they've put a lot of buildup into this to just have that happen completely predictably. But outside of what does happen, I think that Oscar's character is very cool and it shows um, how you can sacrifice without sacrificing your life in actuality but how he will do what Ozpin does not do. He'll do the right thing even when it means giving up maybe what he wanted. He's shown that he will do that. Um, you know, and he's done his best to be part of this team, even though obviously he feels like he doesn't really belong there. What's sad to me is it seems like such a waste if he disappears. Yeah. It's like, he didn't deserve it. He was too good. He was too good for Ozpin. <laughs> to be honest, like, you wouldn't feel so bad if Ozpin took over people who, like, were terrible people. Like, it would still be horrifying. I mean, horrifying, yes, but it's like, did they deserve it? Or did they allow it to happen by their poor actions and choices? Like, did they forfeit? Like, there is some principle of that. You can forfeit your right to make your own choices. Or at least your ability. But... A like-minded individual. The interesting thing is Oscar seems to be the most like Ozma. Ozma was before he died. I mean, they even had the same voice. And I think um, an Oscar was the first name of Oz from The Wizard of Oz. Kind of tying him into this whole, he is like the first. He's like the first, the foremost, the original. And the original Ozma was a great person. Yeah, just dying what, and coming back seems to have corrupted it, him. It just shows what can happen if a regular human is given uh, immortality. He didn't originally have the problem of that Salem seemed to have of not letting go. But once he realized she was in that position, then it seemed like he just had to be the hero to the point where it became a fault, and it still is. But before that. Oscar probably has the same fatal flaw, is my guess, that he may just have to want to be the hero to the point where he'll do something stupid. But at least, essentially, his character seems to be better than Ozpin's. And more like how Ozpin originally was. Just somebody out to do good and help people who kind of fall in love unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. I don't think Ruby will ever be Salem, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can't see it. Can't see it at all. Anyway, I think that's enough, but in conclusion, I really like Oscar, and I have, I was a little worried about him at first, but kind of like Maria, I pretty quickly decided I'm going to like this kid, <laughs> and now he's one of my favorites. 
And I have always liked the message of choice. I think it's one of the most fascinating messages you can make with a character. And there's a lot of different varieties of it. This is a very unique one, obviously. But that's why I am interested to see where they go with it. My theory could be completely wrong. You agree, though, there was some merit to it because he was just lacking in his personality. And I'm sure some of you saw that, too. I'm sure some of you watching, if you've been watching, saw that. So I guess we will find out next week, the week after, or maybe next year, depending on how long they want to torture us. (laughs) You never know with this show. But until then, peace out. And Ah. thanks for watching. Yeah, bye now. thank you for helping me voice in the background who nobody can see. Yeah. Kind of felt fitting. (laughs) It really did. It really did. But for the record, you can't take over my mind. So. Like I'd want to. You would want to take over my mind. Yeah.